Hey there, if you don't know me, my name is Maria and I like to make technology videos on the internet. And in this week's video, I wanted to make a whole video talking about hackathons because it seems like everyone's pretty interested in them because you're not really sure what a virtual hackathon is like or maybe you've never been to an in-person one. So I wanted to share all of my tips and tricks and knowledge because fortunately or unfortunately, I've been to about nine hackathons by now, in-person and virtual and at universities and for companies. So I'm not gonna lie, a lot of the times hackathons make me wonder do i hate myself like why do i keep signing up for this stuff because they are very time consuming and like energy draining experiences but they're also fun and when you look back on them you have crazy experiences and stories like the time where we somehow crossed the border three times at 12 a.m or the time we manifested winning airpods or like drinking boba in the middle of the night all these random things like exploring different universities and it's You'll have so many stories to be able to tell and so many cool experiences. So I wanted to break down this video into five different sections. First of all, what is a hackathon? Then two, who should go to hackathons? Three, why go to hackathons? Four is the biggest piece, the chunkiest piece of this video, which is how they actually work and some frequently asked questions that I got on Instagram. And number five is how to win a hackathon because I have been to nine hackathons or like university and company based. Well, not counting the Shopify ones, so probably more than 10 if I count all of those. But yeah, and I've won three of those. And yeah, so I have some experience winning prizes. <laughs> so what even is a hackathon? Well, if you've never been to one, a hackathon is essentially a competition where you try to rapidly develop a prototype for a product and a problem that you're trying to solve. These usually occur over a weekend, so maybe either starting on a Friday evening or a Saturday morning, and usually ending on the Sunday like afternoon where they have a closing ceremony. And hackathons can be run by either universities or by companies. So I have been to a combination of both, and they're all really fun. It depends on who's organizing them, of course, because sometimes you'll have students organizing things horribly, and you're just like, why am I here? Why am I waiting like two hours in line to get food? Which is not a great experience, because I went to one company hackathon, and I'm like, wow, this is how they should all be run. <laughs> this is amazing. And the thing is that these hackathons can range in very different sizes. So you might go to a hackathon where there's only 20 or 30 people, which I have been to one of those. And it's actually really fun because then you get to like meet everybody essentially that goes there. Or you can go to one that has hundreds or maybe even a thousand people that are there, which is also really cool because then you get to meet so many different people and see all of their different ideas. There's also an organization called Major League Hacking, which is usually where I find the hackathons that I go to because it's for universities to help them run hackathons and you should check them out. I'll leave their link in the description box so you can find hackathons in your area too. So now let's go into the question that people probably talk about the most when discussing hackathons because yes, you might hear the word hack and you're like, okay, you have to know how to code, but you do not. I'm going to tell you straight up, you don't have to know anything about coding to go to hackathon. Like the whole purpose is to learn. They have so many workshops. You can literally go to hackathon and just attend the workshops. They will have introduction to programming or design, or they sometimes even have like uh, a specific stream for the hackathon for beginners who is like their first or second hackathon and they are just learning. So you have, you can have zero programming knowledge. And another point of view is that you don't have to be a programmer to be in a hackathon because all of these product ideation type of things, they need project managers, they need designers. They need marketers, like you need to be able to pitch your project. You don't just need programmers, you need everybody. And you have four people maximum on your team. So maybe like you have one designer, two programmers, one project manager, something like that. You can have a mixture of different people. And obviously that's what you see in the real world. So why wouldn't you see that at a hackathon as well? So now let's go into why you should actually go to a hackathon. What's the point? What will you get out of it? Well, I think there are five main things that you will get out of a hackathon. The first is probably what people always talk about or tell you about is that you can win cool prizes. Like you might get gift cards or you might just win a bunch of money, like cash prizes or a gaming chair or like a Nintendo Switch. And one of my personal favorite reasons for going to a hackathon is to be able to experiment with new technologies because in my normal everyday life, I'm probably not going to be able to use like Flutter and make an app or I'm not going to have the motivation to do that. But when I have like 24 hours to learn something and make something new, then why not try out like learning Flutter, learning Google Cloud or all these different technologies. So that's what I really like about hackathons is that 
it helps you explore and just be like, okay, this weekend, I'm gonna try to learn this programming language or this framework or this tool. Another interesting part about going to hackathons is that you can explore a new business opportunity. I've actually seen a lot of different companies stem out of coming from a hackathon. So they just ideated over the weekend, built a prototype like an MVP, and then they continued building on it. Another important reason for why you should go to a hackathon is the networking opportunities because you don't understand how much you can get out of just talking to people. First of all, you get all the other people who are attending the hackathon and you also get all of the sponsors, all of the businesses. They always send recruiters for university jobs or for full-time roles. So you will definitely be able to talk to them and try to like give them your resume or just ask them about the opportunities at their company and just try to make a connection with them. Like I know so many people who have gotten internships or full-time jobs just because they have talked to people at booths in their hackathons. And the final reason for why I think you should attend a hackathon is that you get to travel. This is kind of a hush-hush type of topic, but I'm going to just say it out now, like whatever. People like to use the free buses that go from one place to the hackathon to visit that city. Like literally when we went from Toronto to Boston for the Boston University hackathon, some people just went to go shopping or visit their boyfriends or girlfriends who live in Boston and didn't actually attend the hackathon which I thought was hilarious, but I still did the hackathon, don't worry. Like I still got to explore a little bit of Boston too. So I think that was really fun. And anyways, like if it's just going to another university, you get to explore a new university campus or visit your friends who go to that university without having to like pay for gas because you're going for free or maybe like you pay $10. So it's actually a really great experience and I highly recommend it when we go back to in-person hackathons that you try to travel to all the different places. Okay, switching up the angle a little bit, let's go into section number four. How do hackathons actually work and what are some frequently asked questions? So I just wanted to give some quick tips at the beginning, which is that hackathons are a lot of energy and make sure that you are not tired when you go to a hackathon, like I did in my hackathon vlog was bad experience. So make sure that you have energy and just prepare to be sleep deprived. Like uh, one hackathon, I stayed up for 38 hours straight. So that was an interesting experience. <laughs> and I also got a tip from one of my friends, which was that since meals and snacks are provided at hackathons, like when you're in person, then make sure that you don't just eat a meal like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Make sure that you're snacking in between, which I agree with because you need a lot of brain and you need some fuel. You need to fuel that brain and you're gonna be working just hours upon hours. So you need to take those breaks and just like walk to the snack table, grab some snacks, make some small talk with other people and other teams. So a question a lot of people ask is how much coding experience do you actually need? And also what are the programming languages that you should know before you go to a hackathon? If you are interested in being a programmer on your team, then I would say that an important thing to know is how to use Git and GitHub. You know, working with multiple people on the same piece of code is important. And for programming languages, I'd say that maybe knowing like just knowing a language like Python or Java or something is a plus, but you can also learn those at the workshops. And there are mentors there and volunteers who can help you learn this kind of stuff. Maybe if you're into web development, like knowing JavaScript or HTML and CSS is helpful. So I think those like basic languages are good. And then you can like build on top of that, learn frameworks and that kind of thing. So when you go to Hackathon, you work with a team. So how do you actually find people to be in your team? And how does that process work if you don't know anyone going to that hackathon? First, I'll ask my friends and see if they also got accepted to that hackathon and see if they want to form a team. And if we don't have enough members, then usually hackathons will create either a Slack or a Discord server. And they usually have a channel called Team Formation and you can post in there and say, oh, this is me. I go to this university or I work at this company. These are some of the skills I have and I'm looking for teammates or I'm interested in making this type of thing. Does anyone want to work with me? And people will message you. And you can also see like oh, what other people put and just message them and try to form a team that way. Or some hackathons actually have like a randomized matching. Like in my hackathon vlog, I was randomly matched with two girls and that turned out really great. And another thing you probably want to take into account when choosing your teammates is everyone's different skill sets and their different level of knowledge. I'm not telling you like if you're experienced, don't take like a noob onto your team because it's nice to like give back and actually teach someone something and see them learn and be like, whoa, I didn't know that this existed. But if you are looking to make something, then you have to look for someone who either has that skill, like say you want to make an Android app and you don't know Android, but someone else does. Maybe they can teach you because you want to learn that. So you can try to search for a teammate that way. 
And also you might be doing the team formation at the hackathon in person. So how does that actually work when you go to a hackathon? Well, you'll enter the hackathon and you'll probably get like a lanyard with your name on it or something when you register. And what the first event is going to be called the opening ceremony. So that's where all the organizers will hype everyone up. And then all the sponsors, like the main sponsors, will explain what their challenges and prizes are. People ask me the question, how do you actually come up with a project idea? So you can use the sponsors challenges as inspiration and also if you want to win their prizes. So what I recommend doing is when you go to an opening ceremony, you have like a Google, a Google Doc open and you take notes on what the challenge is, what they're looking for and what the prize is. And also some hackathons use the website called DevPost and they'll actually post all of those challenges for the hackathon starts. And you can actually make that list before the opening ceremonies. And after the opening ceremonies is when they usually do a team formation in person. And then once you have found your team or when you meet your team for the first time, I recommend obviously doing introductions because you might not know everybody there. Once you have met your teammates and done your introductions, then you all go into that Google Doc that you have created for 10 minutes, everybody just shuts up and you all maybe have your own page, like one person page two, another person page three, and you just write out all of the ideas you have. You don't look at anybody else's page. You just write out all the ideas you have related to the challenges or not related to the challenges, whatever you want. You might combine like three or four challenges, be unique, explore, brainstorm. And then after like 10 minutes or so, everybody should like regroup and then go through all of the different ideas and try to decide on what you like. Maybe you might combine a few different people's ideas or people might build on top of your idea. So the ideation phase is probably the most important phase because you're developing a product and an idea and you're trying to sell it. Like, why is it unique? And you might spend hours on it and then start coding. So don't worry if it takes a long time to think of an idea. And then after you have thought about the idea, then I, if you are going for a sponsored prize, then I recommend actually talking to those sponsors and that company and seeing what are they actually looking for. And when you're trying to think of an idea, think about, is it fun? And am I going to be learning something? Another interesting question I got is what are like the major communication issues that you might have when you're at a hackathon, like with your teammates. And I don't know if there's like, it depends on the people, of course, if you know them or not. Like for me, I kind of like get anxious and stressed out when stuff isn't working, so I have to take a break. I also got the question about like, yeah, how do you keep your teammates focused? So I recommend at hackathons to try to do a lot of pair programming because it's kind of annoying if you're just coding alone or like everybody's separate and just type, type, type. It's more fun if you're like with a person and you're like trying to help them figure it out and bouncing ideas off of each other and you're just learning because that's like the whole point of a hackathon is to learn. And yeah, people might get cranky because they're not sleeping or they want food and then they're not getting enough food. So like feed them just like throw food in their face and be like become a nice person like or de-stress like go outside go on a walk together and how do you actually make a demo and a pitch basically you your pitches will probably be like around like three to five minutes maximum make sure that they have a wow factor so sometimes that might be like your slides are really cool or you have like a landing page on a website and it shows like the idea so i recommend yeah either do a landing page or have like three to five slides explaining why you made this product and then doing a demo like of the code or of the designs or something to actually show them what you created over the weekend and it's a bonus if it's interactive like if you can get the judges to actually use it like we had one app where it was like facial recognition and they like detected their face to see if it was the same as this other person or like an AR app where you can like click around and like expand different things. And it's really cool. So if it's interactive, it's a plus. And also another point is to get the person with the best speaking skills to actually speak. And it doesn't have to be the leader of your project. It could just be like anyone on your team who's like the best at speaking, or you can do like a mixture of different people that just might be like a little bit jarring, I guess, for the judges. Like if it goes back and forth between different people, it's kind of annoying. And another question I got is like, what's one thing that I wish I did differently when I first went to hackathons? So for me, that would be to just like, treat it more as like a chill experience. So just have more fun and explore the city that you're in, take walks outside and meet new people, like go and network. Don't just code the entire time, like actually try to have fun and yeah, just do, do more of that. <laughs> and finally, how do you actually win a hackathon? Well, there are a lot of ways, I guess. It depends on the judges, I suppose. So basically, obviously looking at the rules of the challenges that you're applying for is super important and like talking to the judges like the sponsors, like I said, and also obviously having a great demo and a pitch for like how you made your product, why you made it and why it would be good for that company to implement it is like the most important thing because that's all they get to see. They don't see your hours and hours of work 
and all like the blood, sweat, and tears that went into this. Obviously, it, it always expands my heart when someone asks me like, can I see the code? And I'm like, oh my God, they actually care. And pro tip is that you should visit DevPost where most people post their hackathon projects and you can actually see maybe that company that you're going for their challenge, maybe they were at a different hackathon and had the same challenge and you can see which project actually won their prize and see what aspects of that project were so great that they won and see if you can actually put that in your project or maybe their pitch was really good and you can try to use some of their ideas like in their pitch style or maybe they'll inspire you to like go a different way with your idea and don't copy of course but like use other projects as inspiration and you don't have to do this just for like a specific prize like if you're doing a project on financial literacy you can go on dev post and see what other projects are about financial literacy so try to do something like that and yeah i've been talking for way too much i hope you learned a lot and that you enjoyed this video please like comment your hackathon stories or your experiences or your tips and subscribe too so thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you next time bye